All right, so welcome to our next sort of subtopic of counting. So we're going to look at factorials. And factorials kind of come under, the, I guess, a little bit broader category of arranging. So there's another method for arranging that we're going to look at in the next video. So I'll just save that for then. So, but for now, we're going to look at factorials. So both factorials and kind of other arranging methods, they're used at slightly different times. Um, but the important thing is they're both used for arranging things into lists or sequences. So you use factorials. If there are no restrictions so I'll give an example of what no restrictions means and um, some examples of arranging or factorials you can use both of them for these examples are things like arranging items in a shelf arranging numbers or letters in a word or a string of numbers uh, or arranging people for a photo so those are the sort of questions you can get asked so we're looking at an example with uh, Harry Potter books so I'll scroll down here so here's our first example. How many ways can you arrange the seven Harry Potter books on a shelf? So for example, if we were to start doing this manually, we could say we could put them in order. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Or we could put them, say, in reverse order. So seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then one. Or else we could put them in, say, this random order. One, three, four, seven, six, two, and then five, okay? So we could do that, or we could do thousands of other different orders. There are so many different orders, you could never count them all individually or manually. Uh, it's, yeah, it's just not possible. So if you were to figure out how many different ways you could arrange the seven Harry Potter books, you need to use uh, factorials or another method, but factorials are the easiest. So the way to figure this out, since there are no restrictions, it doesn't say uh, they have to be in a certain order or you only have space for a certain amount, you can use factorials. So factorials looks like this. It's an exclamation mark after the number. So there are seven different books. So you say seven factorial. So we'll just write that. I'll say seven factorial. Uh, and what seven factorial means is seven by six, by five, by four, by three, by two, by one. So if you either put seven factorial or seven by six, by five, by four, by three, by two, by one into a calculator, you'll get this big number here, five, zero, four, zero. So if you wanted to count all the different ways of arranging the seven Harry Potter books manually, you'd have to write out 5,040 different um, combinations. So yeah, seven factorial uh, on the calculators. So on sharp calculators, it is above the uh, four. So I'll just write above, it's above four. Uh, and you'll see a little N exclamation mark. You'll need to press the se second function button to get it. And then on your Casio calculators, it's above the x to the power of minus one. And that is kind of the top right of your calculator. Um, and again, you'll need to press the, I guess, the shift function to get it. It looks like x exclamation mark instead of n exclamation mark in this case. Okay, so that is, I guess, one question using factorials. We'll look at, yeah, we'll look at one or two more as well. So it's quite complicated to kind of figure out why exactly it's seven factorial is the answer. Um, but yeah, if you just think there are no restrictions, then you can use seven factorial as the easiest way. So second example we'll look at is, so if we look at this example here, how many ways are there of arranging 15 players on a hurling team for a photo if they're all in a single line? So again, there are no restrictions here, so we can just use uh, the factorial button on the calculator uh, and we'll find that it's a, an obscenely big number. It ends up being 1.3 by 10 to the power of 12, which is far too big to, by the power of 12, to write out all the different numbers. Um, yeah, it's just an example of the kind of size of some of these numbers you can get. And then the last example we'll look at, I'll go light blue. So I'm not gonna write this one out, but how many different ways can you order the letters in this word here, so maths. So if it, say for example, another one would be just A-M-T-H-S uh, and all the different combinations. So there are five different letters and there's no restrictions on how we have to order them. So again, I'll just say five factorial. And in this case, it'll be equal to 120. So generally factorial questions are pretty handy once you know how to identify them. It's just um, sticking it into your calculator with the factorial button, or you could even work it out by hand if you wanted, but there's no point. So that is it for factorials. In the next video, we're gonna look at kind of when you have restrictions on your arrangements and then we're gonna to have to use permutations, which are a little bit more difficult. But anyway, that should be it for this. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, share them with friends, and we'll see you in the next video.